Now, uh, switching gears again a little bit, uh, other than techniques, I want to go into what candidates are already doing, which is practice, but mm -hmm. I want to uh, talk a little bit about what great practice would look like. Okay. Uh, because if you just go and get cases and cases and cases from case books, your practice is going to have a lot of problems because of the quality of the questions that you're getting and also because of their diversity. So uh, what people need to understand is that their practice for an analysis questions mm -hmm. should be both diverse and realistic. Right. So it should be diverse in the sense that People probably notice once can, they can, practice. Can I yeah. contextualize a bit? So yeah, I, sure. Because I think we're we're on the stream of consciousness here. Go on. So if you want to prepare well for math questions, you need basically three things, right? You need mm -hmm. techniques, mm -hmm. as we discussed. You need practice. Yeah. Uh, and you need to be well aware with all the five main types of uh, uh, math questions or like we call them the five types. Maybe other people would categorize them in a different way, but you have to be, uh, you have to be well versed in different types of math questions, so you're not caught on surprise. So okay. just want to put yeah. it out there. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so it needs to be diverse, and even if you don't know what the five types are, and this is something that I don't really want to spill the beans in here because. Not because it's, it's our secret sauce. Not be, not because it's the secret sauce necessarily, but because if I just say the names of the five types, uh, it doesn't mean anything. So we would actually need to turn this podcast into like a two-hour lesson explaining all of those. Yeah. Otherwise, there's no point. Yeah. But still, if you're practicing for a little bit, you well, let notice, me give them something, Julio. Okay. Uh, let me just finish all this right, out. Sorry. Uh, if you've practicing, been practicing for a little bit, you're going to notice that each analysis will have a challenge. Yeah. One or two challenges. And you know that your practice is diverse, or at least somewhat diverse, if those challenges are changing from question to question. Right. If they're always very similar, if the one thing that you made the mistake in the previous analysis, uh, and you solved that problem, now you're not making any mistakes because that was the challenge in every single analysis. Then... You're you're stumbling onto a problem there. That's probably if you if you're falling into that trap that many case books bring, it's gonna feel like you're doing a GMAT book. In GMAT books, the exercises are generally separated by type. Yeah. And once you understand the hardest one of those, you can do All you know them. the the twenty ones that come before. Yeah. And then you're moving on to a different type and you're learning a different challenge. And practicing analysis should not feel like that. Yeah, one one thing that I see often in materials that you find online is you go to the math practice section and most of them are just pure math. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, multiply this by this, which is dumb. Like, yeah. it doesn't, it's not what you need. Some of them have better practice. Like, some of them have whole cases with math and etc. But what I see often is... Like all the math that you find in a certain uh, website yeah. is like break even questions, which is one of the types. Yeah. So it's important. Mm -hmm. But there's way, there's like four other types, right? Yeah. And if all the math that you see are break even questions, uh, you may be even very good at break even. But then you're going to be caught by surprise by other questions, like a funnel question. Yeah. So I'm trying to spill the beans a bit here. No, that's all uh, right. But just to, to give people context, like there, you can have a break-even question. You can have a funnel. You mm -hmm. can have a funnel within a break-even. You can mm -hmm. have a break-even within a funnel. Yeah. And then there's other types as well. Uh, and you have some variability within that as well. There's different types of break-even questions. And I see often in other websites like, all even like the behind the paywalls like all the math questions are very similar to each other mm -hmm. which gives you a false sense of confidence yeah you're like oh i can solve these like i solved all of these mm -hmm. it's getting easier yeah and that's dangerous if there's no variability as you've mentioned yeah and there's also the realistic sense of them they need to be diverse but they also need to be realistic and i think that there are two points when it comes to being a realistic case math question. One of them is actually having business context, mm -hmm. not just being 
uh, a vague question with numbers that you need to solve. Because yeah, like, of everything that we said before, like you need to be able to identify hidden variables. You need to be able to give uh, meaningful uh, next steps and meaningful conclusions to that number. And the, the other point is difficulty. The questions should be tough. Mm -hmm. The analysis that you're going to do in your interviews are going to be tough. So they're not going to be super simple questions. Yeah. They're going to have one challenge or two. They're also not going to be final calculus exam level right. as well. Right. They're going to be percentages, multiplications, additions, subtractions. And multi-step. But they're multi-step. Yeah. yeah. There's like... Often there's like eight, 10, 12 different variables. Yeah. If you try to compress them into one big equation, like if you're a math genius, you can do that probably, but no one's going to understand. So it's not even the best way to do it. Yeah. So it has to be multiple steps to be realistic with most interviews. Like sometimes you will get an easy question at mm -hmm. BCG, at McKinsey, at Bain. Uh, sometimes you will get a break even question with four variables. Mm -hmm. More common than that is you'll get a break even within a break even within a break even and there's like 12 variables total. Maybe 12 is stretching too much. That's on the hard side, but like eight variables total. You don't really understand what all the variables mean. The interviewer doesn't give you all of them and it's hard to find those online. Yeah. So it is hard to find them. With, that is precisely the reason why we've created yeah. uh, Analytics Academy. So I'm not going to really point to, you know, go to this place and you'll find a lot of good practice questions, except for Analytics Academy. That place doesn't even exist. But uh, I can point you to some benchmark to know if the questions that you're doing are good or not. Yeah. And that benchmark is our free course. We yeah. do have uh, two or three analysis questions in the free course. I think there are three. And... They are a good benchmark, both in terms of business context, difficulty, and variability. Mm -hmm. So that's something you can check out. Uh, if you haven't heard of our, our free course, then it's you just go to craftingcases.com slash free course. Yeah. The course is in there. If you go to caseinterviewpodcast.com, the course is also in there. The course is everywhere. It's on our homepage as well. Yeah, yeah just craftingcases.com. Yeah, I, I